So let's have a look at this machine. So if I open up the lid. There you go. And there it is. And it's a beautiful thing. There it is. It's a beautiful machine. It's 1930s styling. It's all black and silver highlights. It's all wood and steel. Very nice. Very mechanical. Uh, but let's see how it works. So uh, let's, say, let's say I send you a message. I'm going to send you a message in code. And it should be something in German, really. It should be something about Bratwurst or Schnitzel or something like that. Or Schadenfreude. But, uh, I'll keep you. I'll just say hello to you. I'm going to say hello to you, right? So I'm going to type in hello in the machine. Let's see how it works. So when I type in hello, uh, I'll do the H first. And if I press H, there we go. Now, if you can see that, the letter C lights up. The code lights up. That's H becomes C. Let's do the E for hello. E, there you go, becomes an I. So this is the code. L is an M. The second L in hello becomes a Q, mm. and you finish it off, you do the O, and oh look, you get an M again. That's interesting. So that's the code. The machine doesn't transmit. It never did. It doesn't send anything. Someone has to stand next to it and write down the letters that light up. Uh, there is a reason it lights up. Uh, if you built it with a carriage, like a typewriter with paper, uh, it made it heavier. It made it eight times heavier. So that was the reason why it lights up, to make it portable. Uh, but you may have seen something odd about that. So the two L's in hello were two different letters. So old-fashioned codes, if you had double letters, they become double letters in your code. And for a code breaker, you can use that as a clue. It helps you work it out. But this is different. No, a double letter might not be a double letter. If I do this again, if I press A, what have I got? I've got E there. If I press A again, I've got L, and it will keep changing. And there's no pattern to this. There's no way to know what it's going to be next. So you can see why the Germans thought they had an unbreakable code. I'll show you how this works. I'll open up the lid and I'll show you the inside. So you might see these in museums. Uh, there are a few. I did check. There's two in, the, in Canada, uh, but now there's three. There you go. Now, if I open up the lid here, we can have a look at the insides. So not quite a typewriter anymore. Uh, at the top here, let me, well, let me point some things out. First of all, I hope you can see there are 26 little light bulbs here in rows. And then we've got these three big wheels at the top as well. So those wheels are called rotors. And inside these rotors, it's full of wires. Right? And all the wires inside are crisscrossed. It's all like spaghetti inside, all mixed up wires. Now, let's have a look at what happens when I press a letter. If I press a letter, if you can see that, the rotors turn. Well, they rotate, which is why they're called rotors. So this one, boom, on the right-hand side, moves every time. Every time I press, it clicks. When this one on the right, when it does a full turn, when it does a full revolution, it will kick the middle rotor one place. You may have just seen that happen a little bit earlier. Let me see if I can do it again. I don't know when this is going to happen. So if I keep pressing, when it does a full turn, it will kick the middle rotor one. There we go and then it will keep going. When the middle rotor does a full turn, eventually, it kicks the left-hand rotor one place. So you've got a fast rotor, which is going all the time, a middle rotor, and a slow-moving rotor. And it's kind of like you've got hands on a clock. It's like a minute hand, and an hour hand, and a second hand, kind of like that. Now, it's a very clever machine, but all it is, well, all it is, it's just a circuit. It's just a battery connected to a bulb. It's almost the most simple thing you can make. What I've got in this top right corner is the battery. This is a conversion there with the wires coming out of it. That's the battery. That's a modern battery we've got in there now. But when I press a letter, this battery connects to this bulb, and it lights up. All the wires for the circuit are inside the rotors there. But the clever bit is the wires move. So when the wires turn, the battery gets connected to a different bulb. So you get a different bulb lighting up. Let me do that for you. I'm going to turn these wires. And now the battery will connect to a different bulb. And it will do each time, because you're moving the wires. I might give you a better idea of that in a second. I might show you something else. Uh, just to say, before I do that, these rotors actually come out. They can swap order. So you can swap the order of the rotors. Each rotor has 26 starting places. Uh, and I'll show you this as well. At the front of the machine, 
we have even more wires. There's more wires for the circuit. If I pull one of these out, it's called the plug board. You can see that on my hand there. It's like an old-fashioned telephone switchboard. It's like an old plug board or a patch board. And these wires connect letters up together in pairs. Now, let me try and show you this. What I've got over here is great. A Enigma machine simulator. And you can find these on the internet. You can Google this and you can find these Enigma machine simulators and you can use them. And they work just like my Enigma machine down here. But if I do this for you, let's try one out. Uh, I'll press a letter here. I'll press G for no reason. And G becomes J. So G becomes J. Now, if I click this button here, I'm going to show you all the wires inside the Enigma machine. Now, if you remember what I said, inside it's full of crisscross wiring. So it might look complicated. Don't be put off by this. This is the insides of the Enigma machine. And it is, it's just full of crisscross wiring. But if you can see what I did, if you can follow that yellow line, I press G. So when I press G, the path of that yellow line, it goes through the Enigma machine, goes through the rotors, one, two, and three. It actually loops back, it then goes through the machine again, backwards, it actually goes through it twice, goes through it again, and it connects to the letter J. And so J would light up. But if I keep doing this, let's say if I press G repeatedly, let's see what happens. So here I've got G becomes a, what was that? An S. G becomes an S. G becomes an L. If I keep doing that, it will keep changing because those wires turn and the path of that yellow line changes each time they, the rotor moves. And that's why the letter changes each time. But you might be thinking, how do you get the message back? How does this work? How do you get the message back again? Right, this is a good bit. Right, let's try this. I'm going to show you how to get the message back again. So let's do one more message then. Uh, if I switch to the camera. Let's see, um, I'll, say, I'll keep it short. I'll say hi to you. I'll go, hi, how you doing? So I'm going to say hi. I'm going to send you that message in code. So let's do that first. Let's do the hi. So H first, so that's a T. And I for hi is a W. T, W is your code. So someone would write that down. They would then transmit that message by radio. That would travel by Morse code, by radio. And then miles away, maybe on a ship somewhere, miles away, you've got a second German officer. And they're listening to this radio signal, and they're writing down the code. And it's TW. They're writing that down. Now, the second officer has an Enigma machine as well. They've got one of these machines. And their machine is exactly the same as the first one. It's set up exactly the same. There is something I have to do now. When I typed in high, this rotor on the right, it moved. It moved two places. So I'm going to have to reset this machine back to where it started. I'm going to move this rotor back two places. So that just resets to back to where it started. Now I'm going to type in the code instead. I'm going to type in TW. So if I type in the code, T, T becomes H. And if I type in W, W comes I, I, and you get the message back again. It's very clever. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, very clever machine. Brilliant piece of engineering. So it's a code and decode machine. If you type in your message, you get a code. And if you type your code in, you get your message back again. Now, like I say, you've got these two people here, each with an Enigma machine. They're miles apart, and they have to be set the same. How did they know how to set their machines the same? So that was written down for you. If I switch back again. The settings were written down for you on a big piece of paper. It was actually a big monthly sheet of paper, and the settings changed every day of the month. So it changed for each day. I'll show you what it looked like. Big code sheet. Looked like this. And on the left-hand side, if you can see that, that's just the date. We've got 31, 30, 29, and so on. That's just the day of the month. Uh, let me run through how this code sheet works. Uh, so you've got the date on the left. That first column with the Roman numerals is your rotors. Uh, I said there were three rotors, and they can swap order. Uh, they were just called rotor one, rotor two, and rotor three. And there are six ways that you could arrange those three rotors. So let me do that. So there are six ways that you can arrange those three rotors. This second column here, this ring stellung, this ring setting it's called, this is something I've not talked about. On the outside of the rotor, they are labeled. 
with one, two, three, four, or maybe A, B, C, D. So they've got labels on the outside of the rotors. Those labels actually turn. You can shift those labels, they rotate as well. So each rotor has 26 ways to adjust its labels. If you change that, it's going to change your setup. So you need to know where those labels need to be. Uh, so each one has 26 places to arrange it. 26 for the first one, 26 for the second one, 26 for the third one. You multiply that together, the total number of ways you can set those ring labels is 1,576. Now, this third column here, these pairs of letters, uh, what we've got here at the front then, that's the plug board, and that makes pairs. So this pairs of letters here, this column with pairs of letters, are the instructions for setting up the plug board. So those are you putting your pairs together. You actually had six pairs of letters at this point. You would make six pairs, and the total number of ways that you can make six pairs of letters out of the alphabet. This is the biggest number. They were quite pleased about this when they added this. It is this number, which I think is uh, 100 billion. Yes, 100 billion ways that you can set the plug board at the front of the machine. Uh, the final column... Uh, it's called the ground setting. That's pretty much the rotor starting position. So each rotor has 26 starting places. 26 for the first one, 26 for the second one, 26 for the third one. So the total number of starting positions is, again, 17,576. If you want to know the total number of ways to set up this machine, you would multiply that together, and the total number of ways is about 10,000 trillion. There are 10,000 trillion ways that you can set up the Enigma machine. They were quite pleased about that. So you can't check them all. It's not possible. Now, if you've understood most of that, I hope, then fantastic. Phew. There is one more thing I need to tell you. Because there is one more thing. You see, there would be dozens or hundreds of these Enigma messages being sent every day. And if they were all being sent using the same key, the same setting, then that would be bad security. That would be a very bad idea. So they didn't do that. Each message actually had its own secret starting position for the three rotors. They all had a secret starting position for each message. Uh, let me show you how they sent that secret starting position. So, first of all, they would set the Enigma machine to the ground setting. That was written down for you on that sheet of paper. So you would set that. So let's say the ground setting is X, Y, Z. You'd set your machine to X, Y, Z. The operator could then pick his own secret starting position. And maybe the operator chooses to pick A, B, C. It can be different for every message. But let's say he's picked A, B, C. He's got to send that secret in code. And that's what he would do. He would send it to the other guy in code at the beginning of the message. And he would use the Enigma machine itself to encode those three letters, A, B, C. So he would type that into the machine. In fact, he would do it twice. He'd actually do it twice. So A, B, C, A, B, C. And it would turn into six letters of code. In this example, I've got J, T, E, Q, G, L. So you've got six letters of code, and he puts that at the beginning of his message. At the other end, the other guy with the Enigma machine would then use his Enigma machine to decode those six letters. And he would get ABC, ABC. And then he would know that that's the secret setting for the rest of the message. And so each message had its own secret starting place.